we were wondering why Evan wasn't coming. And I think it was the coach from Washington, Washington came over Washington. and said, I just wanted to tell you that your son has done a really amazing thing for my runner. And we had no idea. Their son, Evan, had reached out to Cedar Rapids, Washington runner Adam Todd, who had gotten off course during the JV race. Evan took Adam's hand and ran the last mile and a half together. I was mostly just saying stuff like, let's go, Adam. We can do it. Not much left. We're almost there. As they approached the finish line, other members of the City High team ran along encouraging Adam. It was, it was pretty amazing, actually. And uh, there were people around me who were crying, and uh, uh, it was just one of those magical moments. Evan and Adam's story was quickly picked up by the national and social media. Were you surprised at that amount of attention? Uh, yes, yeah, I was. <laughs> the LSU track coach reached out, as did many total strangers. This one says, Evan, your simple yet huge gesture toward Adam made our hearts swell. At about so the same time, Pastor Craig Brown of First like, Lutheran yeah, in Cedar right Rapids right here, was working yeah. on a sermon based and on the Good Samaritan story. And I just saw Evan and Adam on ABC's Persons of the Week. I, oh, this is a modern day retelling of that. How do we reach out and do the right thing? Well, friends, sometimes it's as simple as offering your hand to one person in need. He kind of stopped to help Adam, thinking maybe this will help me get to the finish line. So he got something out of it from Adam, and Adam got something out of it from Evan. And I think that's really the, the, the greatest part of the story. Well, we are fortunate today to have guests with us, ABC's Persons of the Week. Adam uh, and Evan, they're here today. Will you help me welcome them to our church? And I don't think there was a dry eye in the house that day. It was a total honor to have them here at our church. Evan has given Adam a City High jersey, and Adam gave Evan this t-shirt. In March, they reunited as Adam competed in the Special Olympics. I think that's really one of the neatest outcomes of this, is I feel like our two families are going to be tied together mm -hmm. forever. As for Evan Hansen, he hardly feels like a hero, but he's mighty happy he gave Adam a hand at that cross-country meet in October. I think it made me probably a better person, and it'll probably make me think like a better person and do things better in the future. We both got teary, I yeah, think, when we was, heard what he had done, and then we're waiting for him to come along. Uh, and it, like I said, it's not surprising that he, it's, that's always who he's been. He's yeah. very helping, yeah. caring, you know, very sportsmanlike. You know, his coach, Skay, who I think has been a huge influence on him, said, um, talked about doing the right thing when no one's looking. And I think that's what makes us proud of us. Um, we're really proud of him. Yes, this will always remain a powerful picture. John Campbell, KCRG TV9 Sports. June 27th started out as a typical day for these two, but that changed within a matter of moments. All of a sudden we just, whoom, heard the great big explosion. I'm going, okay, train just derailed or something just blew. Heard a lot of, uh, air going through the leaves of the trees, and then I seen the uh, power line on Diane's house fall in the alley, and then I rushed a little bit sooner, and then I could definitely see it. They both took off running toward their 64-year-old neighbor, Diane Barnes' home. Staley grabbed two fire extinguishers, and Blazik grabbed a wrench. I realized that I could actually hear the gas and since I just mowed it half hour before, I knew where the shutoff was for the gas line, so I knew that I had to shut the gas off. There's no way we're going to be able to fight anything to try to be first responders for anything if we didn't get that off. Staley has more than 20 years of firefighting experience. Once the gas was off, he says that training kicked in. He fought as much of the fire inside as he could and got Barnes out. She wanted to go back and go get her her shoes and her co co clothes on. I said, you have no time, Diane. Your house is gone. Picked her up, helped her up, walked off, and got her out of the house. And about now more than 30 seconds later, we got her across the street. The house was fully involved. She was taken to the hospital, and Blazik and Staley walked away with nothing more than a broken shoe. No one is more thankful than her family. Oh, they are our heroes. They definitely are. Barnes had burns over one third of her body. She spent a lot of time recovering before things started to improve. She's doing stellar.
better than I better than she has in a long time. Now Wood Sturchill's son is rebuilding Barnes's home. It will be done in the next couple of months. Barnes family is just grateful for the two men who kept them together. Well, they were great. You couldn't pay them for what they did. She would not be here without them. She says they will forever be her sister's heroes. In Cedar Rapids, Bria Love, KCRG, TV9 News. As a longtime funeral home director, Marty Mitchell is used to helping families through the grief process. But when it came time to make final arrangements for Korean War vet Charles Lanham, he had a different problem. No known family, no real friends to say goodbye. I just didn't want to see that casket go into their hallowed grounds alone. So Marty went on social media with a plea, asking anyone to come to the funeral last April. Literally hundreds answered the call. The Army veteran who was homeless in his final years before going to live at the Iowa Veterans Home was given a funeral with full military honors and a crowd of mourners. I had contemporaries of mine in the funeral service that came just because it, it was the right thing to do, but extremely touching, um, absolutely overwhelming. Marty's sister, Marna Butler, says her brother often goes beyond expectations to both involve and serve the community. None of what he does is for recognition. Everything is straight from his heart. It is sincere and it is honest. And her nomination included other examples of going above and beyond. On July 4th of 2012, an outing along the Iowa River turned tragic as three children of Burmese refugees lost their lives by drowning. Marty encouraged the community to bridge cultural gaps and embrace the family. This is the cousin and this is the, the brother and sister. He arranged for a final resting place here in a little used pioneer cemetery where many original settlers of the area are buried. And that care and concern that the sister mentioned keeps going in other ways. For instance, you remember the three Burmese children who drowned in the river here five years ago. Well, once a year, Marty actually rents out the Marshalltown Aquatic Center here to give the whole community, including the kids, a safe place to swim. Marty's sister says he's done things like that for years, and it's time for him to get a little recognition, a salute to a hero. Dave Ransman, KCRG, TV9 News.